Hey friends, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish. I wanted to show off a new cool extension that I found for Owlbear Roadie. I didn't find it. Somebody brought it up to me. It's actually one of the viewers of the previous show where I was talking about it said, hey, you should try this. He said, hey, Owlbear got some new stuff and you should check it out. And I was like, what is it? And I did a bunch of research and I found out that there's a new plugin and it's really cool. Owlbear Rodeo is a very, very simple and lightweight virtual tabletop. They are going through a transition from Owlbear 1.0 to 2.0. And there's a whole, one of the new things that Albear 2 does is it has extensions. It has ways for other people to make little bits of code that they can include in their, uh, in Albear Rodeo that you can use. And I want to show one off today because it was really kind of cool. So we start off by going to albear.app. You can find a link down in the show notes. You can find a link in the notes for the show to get to albear.app, which is where Albear 2.0 is. You can log in with your Google credentials. You can log in with an account. There is a paid version in which it has persistent storage, so you can save your stuff up there. It's pretty, I think it's worthwhile. I'm, I'm paying for it, and I think it looks really good. So the first thing you do when you log in is you have like your, your, your profile and everything like that. You go to your profile, and you have all of your games. Now, we're going to load extensions. This, is, this video is about a particular extension. So we have our rooms and stuff. I'm not going to talk about rooms. You can watch the Albert Rodeo videos to learn about how to use rooms, but you'll, you'll get an idea. And down here is these things called extensions. And it says, find new extensions from Albert Rodeo uh, from our great partners here. And it's got a little link that says here. It's a little hard to find. So you click on the here in extensions. And there's a bunch of stuff. And the extension that we're going to use is called Clash. It's brand new. I just discovered it like an hour ago. And I thought it was really cool. And I thought we'd, we'd play with it together. So you click on Clash. Shows you what it does, has a bunch of things. You can read the instructions. It is worth reading the instructions, but I'm going to show you what it can do as well. And there's a copy install link. You can't just automatically add it. You have to like kind of manually bring over the link to the thing. So you copy that over. Then we jump back and we go to our ad. We're back on this, this page for our account and we click on add extension and you paste it in and it finds it and says, yep, is this it? And you say, yeah. And you say add. And now you've got clash as one of your profile extensions. You still have to add it to a game. So I'm going to go up here. I have my Sunday Scarlet Citadel game. I don't know why the icon never shows up here, but the icon doesn't show up. Maybe I don't have one. And you click on edit for your particular game. So you can add it to an existing game. And I'm going to add it to my Scarlet Citadel game. I guess I could add a background here. Oh, there we go. That's kind of fun. I learned a new thing. That looks cool. We'll use that one. So my Sunday Scarlet Citadel game. And you can see that I have all of these extensions and Clash is the one I want to add. So I click on Clash and I hit save. And now I've got my Sunday Scarlet Citadel game with Clash. So now I click it and it opens up my game. And in this case, I'm already in the middle of a game. If you've watched my Sunday Scarlet Citadel games, you know that I've been using Albear Rodeo for the excellent maps that are included with Scarlet Citadel. And you can see like this is where the last game ended actually and a bunch of the characters are around and they sort of shifted to an alternate world and they ran into this demon right there's this there's this demon here i called it the demon out of space now here and up in the upper left you can see i have these icons and i have like owlbear and the players and clash i turned off my other extensions because i really kind of don't need them now that i have this but now i've got clash so i click on clash and it gives you this window and it's a little like i don't know exactly what to be doing with this like what you know it's it's a little empty and when i first was playing with it i was like i don't know what i'm doing then i went and read the instructions as one does, and I learned a little bit more. So you can add people to initiative, which is similar to the initiative plugin, by going here and there's a clash add to initiative. So I can add Dorn, I can add Skrink, I can add Bart, only now it has like their armor class and their other stuff. So I could actually ask them what their armor class is and plug it in here. Or I, I don't know if I can, I don't know about what happens on the player side of this. That's one, one piece of this I don't really understand, but I can add, I can add Garble and I can add Mez. So now I've got their initiatives. I can, they can roll for initiative. We'll, we'll actually, we'll, we'll, we'll just, you know, roll some initiatives for them and get them in order. So we have some initiatives, some initiative set there. So that's, that's kind of nice. But what about the monsters? This is where things get really cool. So we have this demon out of space. And I was like, you know, there's a demon from Toma Beast 3 that I think is really cool that I wanted to use as the demon that kind of pops in out of space. And you can click the monster and you can, you can add it to initiative like you normally can. But here's where it gets really cool. So I have this icon that I picked out for this monster that they're all going to fight. And I called it the demon out of space, but it's actually known as a Vatella demon in Toma Beast 3. And that's what I wanted. So you can see I can click here and I can click view info and it gives me this like generic stat block hit four hit points AC 10. That's not 
a Vitella demon. And I could type in a bunch of info. I could go and edit all this stuff. But here's where the cool thing comes in. The plugin is connected to Open5e. And Open5e has five different monster books worth of OGL content that you can take and you can import into this. And you do that by clicking search monster data. So it has all of the monsters from five different monster books, including Tome of Beast 1, Tome of Beast 2, Tome of Beast 3, and the Creature Codex, all from Cobalt Press. Four Cobalt Press books, plus the 5.1 SRD and Level Up Advanced 5e's Monsters Menagerie. All of those monsters are in here. So we're going to search for v Vitella, and we get the Vitella Demon. We click Import from TOB2, and we get all of the stat block for the Vitella Demon in here, we click save and it's now associated with that icon. It has all of the stuff they've got. It's got their attack rolls, it's got their stats, it's got the whole thing wired in. And when we add that monster to our initiative, right here, it has their 114 hit points and armor class 15 right in there. We can roll for the monster, it has a monster of 12. You can hit all of these and you can, it keeps them all in order. Oh, look at that, and it jumps. I didn't know this, this is a little cool thing. It jumps to whose turn it is when you switch the initiative. And that's sweet. That's a, that's a cool thing. And then you can scroll around. So I think this is fantastic. This means if you say like, oh, you know what? Maybe the Vitella Demon isn't the only thing. Maybe we're going to have old, old Shuck was the name of it. Old Shuck was something that I used in my Empire of the Ghouls game. And it's the name of this like evil wolf hybrid thing. And I can go in here and I old Shuck. It's a generic stat block. That doesn't work. But I can go to search monster data. And I can do Shuck. And I get the black Shuck. And I hit import. And now I've got the Black Shucks stat block. I hit save. And I've got the whole stat block for that monster right here in Albear Rodeo, this super lightweight VTT that has the stat blocks for it. I can add all, all the Black Shuck to our thing. Roll initiative, it drops them, drops them right there. And whenever it's their turn, I can pop that open. I can roll, I can bring this up. It has rolling built in, but sometimes if the stat block isn't formatted quite right, you see like it says plus eight to hit and there's not a space there. It's actually my fault. I, I didn't import the data into open 5e, right? So you can blame, you can literally blame me personally for this problem because sometimes things get a little wonky when you're converting a bunch of data to open 5e, but it's there. And then you, what you can do is just roll regular die or you can use the dice roller app that's inside Albert Rodeo. But sometimes the dice works perfectly inside here sometimes the formatting isn't isn't exactly right and it, it can't quite pick out that plus eight and it doesn't do the the rolling but you can roll you can roll your attribute stats right up here too if you roll strength 19 you'll see it pops up and says 1d4 uh, 1d20 plus 4 for 22 you can dismiss it doesn't actually roll a die Again, there's a dice roller app that's built into Albert Rodeo if you want to add that extension too. So I think this is really cool. This 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 is really cool for a few reasons. One is it's obviously really neat to be able to drop in all of this 5e material into your Albert Rodeo game and use it. The other thing that's really cool is it shows off what the value is of having a lot of open 5e data available to different systems. I'm a huge supporter of open 5e. I've talked about it on my show before. A number of different people from my show have come to support open 5e. A bunch of developers have come there. People like me, other people have been working to convert data that's available under the open gaming license. A lot of open gaming material that's available from publishers like Cobalt Press, publishers like Level Up 5e, we've been converting these data into stuff that we can put into open 5e, and then systems like this can draw that data in and drop it in a tool. It's fantastic. It's really, really fun stuff. It makes the tools very, very useful. And you can see, like, it's just it's just really cool to, like, you drop a plugin into your, your tool and suddenly you have 2,000 monsters. Again, the name of the extension is Clash. Clash is really cool. You can add it into your Albert Rodeo 2.0 instance and you immediately have access to 2,000 different monsters that you can drop right into your game. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can subscribe to the Sly Flourish newsletter and get more tips and tricks like this absolutely free. You also get a free Adventure Generator PDF and a weekly RPG-related article sent directly to your inbox. You can also become a supporter of Sly Flourish at Patreon. Right down in the show notes below, you can become a patron. Patrons get access to all kinds of exclusive material, tips, tricks, video previews, all different things you get for becoming a patron of Sly Flourish. And you can pick up any of my books at the Sly Flourish bookstore. All of the links for that are available down in the show notes below. Thank you all very much. Have a great day and get out there and play an RPG.